So now we have Affinity Photo version 2.1. In fact, the whole suite of designer, photo and publisher all upgraded to 2.1. If you've already bought Affinity Photo 2, then it's free. So why should you upgrade? Apart from the, the very low price, when you are, as a software company, publishing a new version, so like version 2, there's a lot of build up to it and you have the date set at which you're going to do it. And, and so you put it out there and there's lots of new things and it's really great, but there are going to be bugs and there's only going to be bugs despite lots of testing that users will find and things will turn up. And there's also some of the features you were going to put in you haven't quite had time to do. And some of the ones which you have done, there's a lot of feedback going, there eh, should be something different. So the version one fixes all those, that for 2.1 fixes a lot of those. So this is a good reason to upgrade because you'll get a lot of bug fixes, you'll, things will improve and it'll be a bit better. Not necessarily lots of whizzy new features, but some good stuff and solid things in there as well that are generally like nice to work with. So it's still very much the same program but with some good things. One thing is, well, two things to say here. One is the Affinity Suite is a graphics suite, the designer and the publisher. It's aimed at graphics users, graphic designers and so on. And they all work very, very well together. This means if you're a photographer like me, there are some things where well, it kind of would be nice to have this, but the publishers have focused on the graphic stuff as a major element, and of course that's so that the changes here, a number of them are graphic, but that's okay. Secondly, there is no whizzy AI in it, and you see conversations about this. And as a publisher, I don't think too much about this. As a photographer in particular, I'm pleased that there's no AI in it. You can buy AI plugins and things like that, but when you start using it, it is so clever, it ceases to be your photograph. And that's why I don't particularly like AI or use it myself in any form. I can use it, I have investigated it, but it's not for photography as a creative medium. Right, so let's get started looking at this. If you got want to go here, this is at the moment the front page, but it's not always going to be there, but we'll use this and it'll stay in the video, of course. So I scroll down a bit and there's a click on here and what's new. So it's May 23 and I go down here and there are loads and loads and loads of things here. So how can we understand these? Do we need all of these? I'll go through the things which are only relevant and probably over a number of videos because otherwise it'll just go on forever. But I will note on the videos what are, is being covered. If you want more detail, then if you go to the forum, which is the forum.affinity.serif.com, and you can get to it through the menu on Affinity Photo and the Help tab, then in here, go down to the bottom, where it says Beta Software Forums, and look, 2.1 new features and improvements. If you click on that. And within here, you've got discussions about all kinds of things. So there's a lot more detail. And so if you want detail, you can find it here. And this is a useful start new features and improvements list here. And in here, there are links to discussions. So for example, if you wanted to go to say crop tool improvements, you click on that. You go to a complete discussion here. See, there's many pages of it. There's an initial description of it, and then underneath there's all sorts of other discussions. So this is the place to go for detail if you want to explore individual features. Right. So that's enough for the first video. Apart from a quick discussion about what's going on in the next video, I can talk about the detail. So just finally in here, if you open any one of these, then down here it tells you what it is being used for. So this is the designer, this is photo, and this is publisher. So it's in all of these. So balance dash lines appears in each one of these. So it's relevant for us here. It works on Windows, Mac OS, and iPad. 
So I use photo on Windows, so it's relevant for me. And these pictures of here basically say this is the desktop or the laptop, so computer based, as opposed to the tablet based, which is over here. So that if I scroll down here, there's lots where it works on all of them, but there's some here which are computer based only, but so that's relevant for me. Then another whole bunch here which are tablet only, which I'm not interested in at the moment. Right, that's it for the first video. I will be publishing quickly all the other videos so they can read them together as a set. So that's the place to go. And the next video will be out soon in which we'll start looking down these and the detail of what happens. That's it, and thank you very much for watching.